Welcome to Jersey Matters. I'm Larry Menti. Recently, Governor Phil Murphy wrote an op-ed for NJ.com talking about the successes in the economy in New Jersey. Writing the response was Regina Agia, former chief of staff to Governor Christie and president of the Garden State Initiative. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me, Larry. I, I, we've talked about this before, but I think it's important for people watching to understand what the Garden State Initiative is. So let's start with that before we get to the op-ed. Sure. We're a public policy think tank based here in New Jersey, and we're focused on fiscal and economic matters. And that's why you were asked to write a response to Phil Murphy. What was your problem? and I know you had several. What was your problem with his op-ed? Well, it's really the economic indicators of the economy are in stark contrast to the claims that he was making. Uh, our first quarter GDP is lagging not only the average in the U.S., but our entire region as a stark example of how our economy is not flourishing under the public policies of this administration. Specifically, you're talking about the GDP? Yes. So GDP in the first quarter was, in the U.S., average was 3.1%. New Jersey came in at 1.8% growth, tied for dead last in mainland U.S. So we're lagging not only the U.S., but New York is at 3.8, uh, Pennsylvania's at 2.9. So we're behind not only the average in the country, but our region as well. I thought it was interesting. You talked about the G GDP. You also talked about the unemployment numbers. But the unemployment numbers are pretty good, aren't they, for right. New Jersey? Right. The unemployment rate, it's a great thing to have low unemployment. But we need to always look underneath those numbers to really understand what it's telling us. And the actual labor force, Larry, the number of people actually working in New Jersey are about the same as they were in 2008. So our labor force really hasn't grown. And the growth of the workforce, I believe you would argue, is because we're not attracting new businesses. Absolutely. Absolutely. What, you know, the, the uh, business environment is ranked, no matter what independent group you look at, we generally rank last in terms of uh, cost of operating a business as well as business friendliness. So we aren't seeing the capital investment rate, which brings jobs with them. As you would expect, there were some responses, letters to the editors about your response to Governor Murphy. And some were saying you were partisan, but I think that's the name of the game. Both sides are partisan in this. But also they were saying that, that this economic downturn, if there was an economic downturn, and I guess there was with, across the country, started in 2008, and Governor Christie, when you were there, didn't do enough. And they specifically talked about the tunnel project, that if that had started, we would have brought new money and new jobs into the state. How do you respond to that? Well, two things. At an overall level, and I'll come back to the tunnel point, but the overall level, when you look at the actual number of people working in New Jersey, it was growing in 15, 16, and actually into 17. And it's begun to trail off and really been rather flat since the Governor Murphy has come in. In addition, the participation rate for our labor force, we always boasted, in fact, the last 20 years, we've boasted having a higher participation rate than the U.S. In the last year, it's fallen below the U.S. participation rate. U.S. participation rate is coming up. We've come down and now crossed over. So those are things that have happened really in the last two years. And then specifically on the tunnel, which has been you know, a conversation uh, that has been ongoing because of the gateway and the desire to build gateway, the ARC tunnel had two issues. One is its, its end point being in the basement of Macy's, not even in Pennsylvania Station. And secondly, the liability that that created for New Jersey alone. That was the really the sticking point and what caused the governor to change the direction and really look for a fair distribution of the cost. So that's interesting. So you're drawing a distinction between the ARC project and the Gateway project, because many times when people talk about the Gateway project, they say Governor Christie right. should have approved this, but you're, you're saying it's apples and oranges. They're very different projects, and the Gateway project is absolutely one that we need for infrastructure. And I think that we continue to advance that um, you know, in Washington and in New Jersey. I, I don't think it's unusual for an administration to blame its problems on the past administration, especially when it's a past administration that's not in the same party uh, as, as they are. But uh, you speak with Governor Christie, um, and I don't need you to speak for him. But um, is, uh, how does he react to the fact that he gets blamed for so much by this governor. It, it is almost unusual that every time he points to a problem, he talks about the previous administration. Look, I think even his own party is calling him out on that, right? Uh, most recently, right, Senator Sweeney formed a, a select committee to look at the issues on New Jersey transit. And he himself, Senator Sweeney said, 
This administration's been in office for 18 months. We have to own these issues and we have to figure out how to go forward. So I think everybody's understanding that at this point in time, we have to look to the future, not the past. You deflected very well. You don't want to answer for a guy. <laughs> you know, I understand. I just wanted to see, I wanted to actually just see if you would. It's so, a good try though. I, thanks. So what is the problem? What, what, what do you think? It's, uh, because it also in some of the letters that were written, they said, oh, this is a typical Republican response. Lower taxes yep. are, going to cure, are going to cure everything. Right. Are they? Look, we're not ideological, and that's why what GSI spends time on is finding opportunities to reduce spending to enable the tax reduction. And that really, I think, is the, the, the big difference between just being ideologue about lower taxes versus trying to find a better way to invest the money that we need to grow our economy in New Jersey. I think for GSI, the success metric is that our economy grows and that generates more state revenues. Therefore, we can then invest in the things that we really think are important. It's interesting, every time I try to make that argument uh, or just ask the question to uh, Democrats in, in Trenton, they come back with the response that we've already done that. We've cut spending as much as we possibly can cut spending without affecting the health and well-being in the state of New Jersey. And then I read a story that at the New Jersey Department of Education, they have more employees there than ever before. So some of the, it, it seems like they're increasing positions at the same time they're saying they can't cut any more costs. Well, we're also not looking at how competitive we are, right? It's not an absolute number, but it's how do we compare to Pennsylvania and New York and the things that they're doing and their tax rates. And they're doing things differently than us that cost less. You know, the, the prime example of this is Massachusetts, actually. Right, K through 12 education, we tend to be one and two in terms of quality. We both have terrific K, you know, K through 12 systems. But Massachusetts spends 15% less than New Jersey on a per pupil basis. And we spend a total of $25 billion, right, on K through 12. That means there's $3 billion more that we're spending in New Jersey than Massachusetts and getting virtually the same outcome. There's got to be opportunities to reduce spending that we need to go work on and look at how other states do things. We're coming up to a presidential election, but we're also coming up the year after that to a gubernatorial election. Are you thinking about it? Running for office? Yes. No, I, you know, I think I'm doing work that needs to be done. We always observe this, right? When we, I was in the administration. No one was doing this kind of work about the economy and really understanding what it takes to grow our economy. So I'm really excited to be doing this work, and that's my intent. We have an election coming up this year in New Jersey that I don't think a lot of people know about, and even those who know about it don't care about, and it's for some assembly seats and some local seats. But this is an important election. It will affect people's lives. Absolutely. It's a shame if people you know, aren't paying attention because, as you noted, the assembly is up, freeholders are up, council members, boards of ed, and I always ask, whenever anyone asks for my vote, when are you going to lower my taxes? Because that is what the uh, state needs in order to grow the economy. And the opportunity has presented itself at all those levels to do that each year. All right, thank you so much. I, I can't imagine that the turnout will get over 20%, but, and, and it's a shame, but maybe we should just be talking about it more. Thank you. Thanks. Regina Agia, former chief of staff to Governor Christie and president of the Garden State Initiative. Jersey Matters continues right after this. When we come back, ALS is a devastating and incurable disease, especially hard on the family members. Coming up next, we'll talk to a group that takes care of the caretakers.